In the first chapter, we learned about the difference between yourself and your mind. We discussed how you can observe your thoughts to free yourself from suffering and be present in the moment. The chapter begins by acknowledging that nobody's life is completely free from pain and sorrow. It emphasizes that the pain you experience is often a result of not accepting the present moment. This resistance manifests as judgment in your thoughts and negativity in your emotions. The mind tends to deny or resist the present moment because it relies on time, which includes the past and future, to function and maintain control. However, this resistance leads to dysfunction, pain, and sorrow in our lives. If you find the present moment challenging or unpleasant, the advice is to accept it as it is. Observe how your mind labels it. By understanding the workings of your mind, you can step out of its resistance patterns and allow the present moment to be. The key is to accept and then act. Regardless of what the present moment holds, treat it as if you chose it. Work with it, not against it. Make it your friend, not your enemy. This shift in perspective can miraculously transform your entire life. Every emotional pain you go through leaves a lingering residue that stays with you, blending with pains from your past, including those from childhood. This accumulated pain forms a negative energy field within your body and mind, almost like an invisible entity with two states, dormant and active. Even in someone deeply unhappy, the pain body can lie dormant 90% of the time. Pay attention to any signs of unhappiness in yourself, and catch it as soon as it starts to awaken from its inactive state. Remember, the pain body feeds on your thoughts and emotions. Once the pain body takes control, you unknowingly seek more pain. While you may vehemently deny wanting pain, a closer look at your thoughts and actions reveals a pattern designed to spread it. If you were truly aware of this pattern, it would lose its grip. The pain body, a dark shadow created by the ego, is afraid of the light of your consciousness. Despite its difficulty to accept, all pains are, in essence, illusions. The moment you observe it, feel its energy within you, and shift your focus to it, the identification is broken. This state is referred to as, presence. You become the witness or observer of the pain body. When you start to disidentify and become the observer, the pain body may continue to operate and attempt to lure you back into identification. Even though you're no longer feeding it through your identification, it has a certain momentum. Therefore, remain a vigilant guardian of your inner space. You might face strong inner resistance when trying to disidentify from your pain, especially if you've closely identified with your emotional pain for a significant part of your life. If this resonates with you, observe the resistance within yourself. Notice your attachment to the pain and be keenly aware. Observe any peculiar satisfaction you derive from being unhappy and the compulsion to talk or think about it. The resistance will diminish when you bring it into conscious awareness. Then, redirect your attention to the pain body, stay present as the witness, and initiate its transformation. To summarize the process, focus your attention on the feeling inside you, recognizing it as the pain body. Accept its presence without turning the feeling into thoughts, judgments, or analysis. Avoid forming an identity around it. Stay present and observe what is happening inside you. Be aware not only of the emotional pain but also of the, one who observes, the silent watcher. This is the power of the now, the power of your conscious presence. See what unfolds. For many women, the pain body tends to arise, especially before menstruation. Though it will be discussed in detail later, it's essential to know that staying alert and present during this time provides an excellent opportunity for a powerful spiritual practice, facilitating rapid transmutation of past pain. Fear takes various forms such as unease, worry, anxiety, nervousness, tension, dread, and phobia. This psychological fear typically revolves around potential future events, not what is happening in the present moment. While you are here and now, your mind often projects into the future, creating an anxiety gap. At the same time, the ego, a vulnerable and insecure aspect of your psyche, feels constantly under threat, seeing death as an ever-present danger. This fear of death influences every aspect of life. Be vigilant for defensiveness within yourself, protecting an illusory identity or a fictional self-image. By bringing this pattern into your conscious awareness and observing it, you detach from it. In the light of your consciousness, the unconscious fear pattern will dissolve, putting an end to arguments and power struggles that harm relationships.
Another facet of emotional pain tied to the EGOIC mind is a profound sense of lack or incompleteness, either consciously or unconsciously. If conscious, it manifests as a persistent feeling of unworthiness. If unconscious, it surfaces indirectly as an intense craving for possessions, money, success, power, recognition, or special relationships to feel better or more complete. Common ego identifications involve possessions, work, social status, knowledge, physical appearance, abilities, relationships, personal history, belief systems, and collective identifications like political, nationalistic, racial, religious affiliations. However, none of these truly define you. This realization could be frightening or a relief for you. But, this becomes apparent, especially when death is nearby. Death, seen as the stripping away of all that is not you, wise men's life secret is to, die before you die, and discover that there is no actual death.